What's up YouTube? Welcome back to JDS Outdoors. Today's video we're going to go over the long awaited solar upgrade to version number two uh, portable power box um, built out of um, Plano or Plano, however you want to say it, uh, field box. So what you're going to need for this, and everything can be purchased at Harbor Freight if you so choose. Uh, for demonstration purposes only, I have a one and a half watt solar panel. It's a trickle charger solar panel, um, and it'll help to maintain the batteries, but it's not going to do too much for charging your batteries should you choose to uh, require a lot of power. Um, I would highly recommend getting one or two of their 25 to 50 watt solar panels, depending on which route you wanted to go, and uh, use that and you will have days of power, no problem, charging your power box. This is going to be a great addition to the already good uh, power box that I've gotten lots of uh, feedback over. And this will help you to keep it charged up in uh, emergencies, uh, long camping trips, uh, long fishing trips, uh, situations like that, hurricanes. Um, and this is going to be safer than uh, a lot of the other solar panel options you see offered with these things when you purchase them for sale. So demonstration purposes only. This is a one and a half watt um, solar panel just to get the point across. You're going to need a solar charge controller. If you do not have a solar charge controller, you run the risk of damaging your batteries, whether it be overcharging them or if your panel doesn't have a, um, a diode built into it to uh, protect back draw. I'm forgetting the actual terminology. Forgive me on that. Um, but it will, it can draw off of your your solar panel can draw off of your battery instead of charging your battery if that makes sense uh, please excuse me for the brain fart so regardless you're gonna want to have a uh, solar charge controller charge regulator to help protect your battery um, both ways and then you're gonna want to have this um, waterproof port that we're gonna mount to the outside of the box uh, so that way your solar panel can plug into it when you want to charge and unplug and stay waterproof um, when, when you don't want to charge. So for starters, we're going to have to make a few changes to the way this box is wired. Now it's pretty easy. What we have to do to get this started here, we're going to shut off and unplug the battery. And we're going to remove the battery so that way we have some space to work inside the box here. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out where you want to put your charge regulator or your solar charge controller. You have three um, input slash outputs on this panel or on this charge controller. One is the battery, one is the solar, and one is the load. So essentially, what used to plug into your battery is now going to be your load. So you're going to plug this into there. Your solar goes out to your um, solar panel. So what you're going to want to do is uh, plug your solar panel into this. Or your solar plug into the solar port. And then your battery hooks up to this one. And to have a nice easy spot for this to mount where it's going to be out of the way, we are going to mount it just under the two LEDs, drilling a hole through the side. And in this instance, I'm going to use pop rivets. You can use the same screws that were used to mount your um, fuse block if you so wish. For ease of use for me, I'm going to use um, a rivet gun. So that is where that is going to mount. Then, the exterior port is going to mount essentially right here in this corner, better reference right there, and it takes, um, we're going to use the same three quarter inch drill bit, 
that we use to drill the holes for all of the switches. There will be a little bit of trimming needed to get this to fit snugly with an X-Acto knife. But we're going to get here started uh, drilling the holes for the plug and the uh, solar charge controller. All right, so here we have the hole drilled in the side and the hole drilled in the face for the rivet on the uh, charge controller. The next step we're going to want to do, um, I've already done it to one side previously just to test this situation out, is we're going to want to cut this first plug that says battery and the next plug that says load. You're going to want to cut that this plug off and install the male portion of the uh, spade connectors because here we have the female version we want to do the males so that way we can install the females on another set of wires and hook it up to the females so to do that you just take a wire cutter or flush cut whatever tool you want to use cut it off and then you're going to want to cut this off with a utility knife and strip the wires back so the wires look like this with the ends stripped and clean then we can go ahead and add another set of female connectors so next step after that set this aside we're going to go ahead and install through the side hole our new plug now there's going to be a little bit of extra wire in there and it's not a big deal we can just zip tie it up keep it off to the side we'll lose some of that storage space but if you want to do the solar upgrade that's a small price to pay so we're going to go ahead here and install rivets in the holes to permanently mount the plug Now with the plug firmly riveted in, in place, we're going to go ahead and take the last plug, the middle one that says solar, and we're going to plug it into that plug, just like that. And we're going to shove this back down in place, making sure to leave the extra female spade plugs easily accessible down there at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and rivet that in place as well. Now with the charge controllers mounted firmly and kind of tucked out of the way, I also got the little bit of loose wires zip tied together, we can go ahead and finish hooking up the rest of the plugs. Now kind of the reason I left the one side with that little sheath on there and the other side plain is so it's easy to tell the difference uh, b between the two in case you can't get down there and read um, for yourself. So if we remember the one with the sheath on it was the load. Now your load is going to be what comes out of your charge controller and goes to your accessories. So essentially what plugged into your battery prior. And we're going to have to cut this wire down and shorten it. So you want to kind of measure a little bit by hand there, eyeballing it, and get a leave a little extra slack, pinching the wires where you need to cut it, and go ahead and cut off the excess. With the excess removed, we can go ahead and hook up two male spade bit connectors and go ahead and plug those in to the charge controller. With the ends connected you're now down to your last step. We'll zip tie that a little later. So now the last two wires that are left are your battery supply. So we're just going to make two essential 
jumper cables, so to speak, out of a length of wire that go down long enough to reach the plugs with a little slack. So that way it can connect from the charge controller to your battery. And then we're going to strip and add ends to each one of the wires. Now with the jumper wires made to go from the battery to the charge controller, we're going to reach down in there, blocking all of your views, and plug it in. With both the wires hooked back up, now it's time to reinstall your battery. We'll go ahead and run a few zip ties around that here in a couple minutes. So we switch on our power and we still have everything working. Front lights, USB cigarette lighter, and uh, your power posts here. Now if you can get a look down at the charge controller nothing's lit up on it. That's because a solar panel isn't connected and sending power through that. So as soon as you hook up a solar panel, it's probably going to be really tough to see, but that middle light is on showing charging. It's extremely dull because the solar panel isn't in direct sun contact and it's also a really small solar panel for demonstration purposes because this fits on the table. So as soon as you get this solar panel or a bigger 25 to 50 watt out in direct sunlight, that light will get a little bit brighter. As you can see just by putting it in my uh, fluorescence, it got a little bit brighter on its own. There's also some warning indicators on there, whole, uh, low voltage and high voltage to help keep your system safe and protect your battery from overcharging. Now don't be fooled by um, other ones saying, oh you don't need a charge controller, it, it's fine. In reality, you're probably not going to do too much damage with a 1.5 watt solar panel or some of your other smaller solar panels. But should you choose to hook it up and then per forget about it for a few days, there's a chance you might damage your battery and it's not really worth the risk. These little solar panels don't really do a whole heck of a lot other than help maintain, maybe run an LED for a little bit longer. They're, they're more of a gimmick than anything. You want, if you want to do this system and you want to do it right, get yourself a charge controller and get yourself a little bit of a bigger solar panel and you'll have unlimited power for days as long as you have sunlight. Even uh, interior lighting will help charge it as well and this will keep it from overcharging so i know this video has been long awaited i appreciate everybody's patience it's been a hectic summer but finally here is the solar panel upgrade to version 2 portable power box i'm going to have another portable power box video coming out it's going to be a little bit bigger a little bit more in depth um some cooler stuff on it Definitely going to have solar integrated into it, um, so keep an eye out for that at some point this winter slash spring. And uh, again, all these parts can be purchased at Harbor Freight. Uh, if you don't have a Harbor Freight near you, there's an unlimited amount of options on Amazon. I do believe Amazon even sells those exact parts as well. So really appreciate the continued support. Hopefully this uh, helps give you one more cool thing you can do to your power box. Uh, appreciate you watching JDS Outdoors. As always, thanks for watching.